Times have partnered up with Marseille and Puma to release a very special issue. Talking about everything that goes into Marseille as a club, the history behind it, the players that made it and the stars that are shining today. On top of that, there's some outstanding pictures of their brilliant kit. And I know I certainly want to get my hands on the away one. We sat down with editor-in-chief and founder of these football times, Omar Salim, to bring you a very special episode of Behind the Zine, Marseille edition. We talked about what went into the issue, what it was like working with one of the biggest names in French football, and what is it about Marseille that makes it such a special city. Please enjoy the episode and be sure to pick yourself up a copy at thesefootballtimes.shop. And while you're there, go and check out Marseille's new kit too. Enjoy the show. For the 120 years that this club has been in existence, it's been the premier club in the whole city. There's like kids who have got it, and you, you're just seeing the whole spectrum of society, old and young, all of them wearing Marseille stuff on, all of them like feeling a part of the club. You have sort of just released today an issue with Marseille and Puma. So can you tell us a little bit more about how that project kind of came to be? Um, well, like a lot of clubs around at the moment, they've, they've got an interest in us making a magazine about them. Um, obviously, they've seen some of the other ones. And yeah, we, we had a chat with Marseille's uh, marketing and, and social team. And um, we'd actually been wanting to work with Puma for a while. So they, they'd been sort of trying to figure out what club we could do. And then the pandemic started and it was, you know, obviously a little bit difficult. So we, yeah, we had a chat with Marseille, told them uh, exactly what we'd like to write about. Um, and whether they had any requests and they, they've been brilliant they've just sort of said look here's here's what we'd like to see uh, in the magazine but you guys go ahead and make it as, as you do because we've, we've seen the other ones we like them um, and then afterwards we'll get back together and find out whether uh, there's anything that we need to change but they've they've really enjoyed it and yeah so it's a it's a pretty good combination they're actually i should probably take this moment to say they're they're brilliant at marseille they're like the most chilled out they're as cool as you think that the club is like the people that work there i think you just got to be cool to either play for them or uh, or work for them so uh, yeah they're really nice people and we're we're, we're we're absolutely delighted to have made this with them so going into the issue straight off the bat there's kind of a a nice little photo shoot of the new kits and, and we have to talk about them to be honest and Puma have done a, an amazing job with them and I'd certainly want that away one in my wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> so do you think Puma have smashed it out of the park with this season's kit? I, I reckon they have. I think that um, we, we sort of, we, there's so many kits out there that are like, you know, following templates and I know some manufacturers are trying to avoid following the templates but I think when you look around Europe right now, you know, you look at like Liverpool's kit, for example, and it's just a little bit underwhelming. There, was, there wasn't that X factor, there wasn't something different. But if you look at Marseille's kits uh, for this year, the home kit, which has actually got a really cool pattern and that's in the magazine and the away kit, which is just an incredible illustration featuring like the city itself. Um, it, it's brilliant. And I think that that's what, I think that you, you actually build up, like that shirt will become iconic in time, particularly if like Marseille were to have a good year this, this season. It become like an iconic shirt, right? Kind of like Liverpool's grey candy strip and things like that. That they become synonymous with that team, and like that. Every year, I don't, I don't see why a manufacturer can't be going out there and doing something a little bit different and capturing people's imagination. Because you, you're not a Liverpool, you're not a Marseille fan. I'm not a Marseille fan either, but. I'd actually wear that kit. I really like it. It looks good. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see why manufacturers can't just put that little bit more in and sort of capture the neutrals, like, imagination, as well as the fans that will probably go and buy it, even if it looks rubbish. Yeah, exactly. I think it's that of, you know, the, the fans are going to buy it no matter what, really. They're going to buy one. But it's about capturing that sort of the me and you sort of people who just enjoy football, enjoy things, but go, do you know what, that's a... It's a really nice kit. I'm, I'm going to buy, unless it's Man United, of course. In which case, <laughs> they, they can have their lovely kits, but we won't be dealing with those. Yeah, but, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so jumping into the issue itself, you you set the scene brilliantly at the start with a kind of full in-depth history of Marseille from the from the founding of the club to kind of a post-war sort of um update on it if you like and how important was it for you guys one how interesting was it finding all and researching this and editing it and and two how important was it for you guys to give that context to a reader who most likely won't know about this history of marseille 
Yeah, I think that's massive. I think I think to understand any football club, you, you need to delve into the past. You need to know how Marseille, why are they such a big club? Why do they mean so much to the people there? Um, how is the history linked to the North African migrants that came came from um, came at the start of the 20th century and that? So we yeah we we run into that. Paul McParland wrote the piece, and I, I don't I still don't know how he has gone into that much research. I don't know how many people he must have spoken to, how many people he bothered to get it done. But um, yeah, I, th I think it sets the scene nicely. I think you understand the connection right from the very start of the club between it and the people of Marseille, because that's this club was actually created to be for the people. It was originally a rugby club and then sort of morphed into multi-sports like a lot of clubs at, at the time and then now is just a, a football club. But it's about setting the tone, getting the reader to um, see why there is that connection between club and city. And it's like that in a lot of different places, but we try and tell that story in most of the issues that we write. So it's, I think it's important to give the, the, the reader some sort of background as to where, where Marseille have come from. Um, and two players that they won't really need background on the reader will be Didier Drogba and Dimitri Payet, two sort of players who run rampant in the Premier League but actually were famous and wore the blue and white of Marseille with Payet still still there. So you kind of, let's start with Drogba, he only played a solitary season in Marseille and, and he called it home, yes. And when you read the story, you kind of find out why and you find out his sort of struggles and ups and downs of being a footballer and the struggles he went through with his family and juggling education for a lot of it. But, and also the fact he almost played fullback, which I think would have been the biggest crime against <laughs> football possible. But what was it about the club and its relationship to Drogba? Because from the outside, he, he's probably played a very minute part in, in their history. But what was it about that special relationship that, you know, the writer obviously thought was worth writing about and you thought this has to kind of be in the magazine? I, th I think for I mean that uh, you said the word outside and it's kind of kind of apt because he was a bit of an outsider it took him a long long time to actually reach the very top of the game but that year in Marseille was really the making of Drogba in so many ways it was the year throughout the UEFA Cup campaign and you being a Liverpool fan I'm sure you might remember uh, how good he was against Hippie and Carragher um, and, it, and it was the, probably the campaign that announced him to the rest of Europe. So that's one thing that it was a springboard that took him to Chelsea and took him to absolute superstardom. But it was, I think that Marseille fans, there's a, they, I think Marseille fans want one of two things, or ideally both, if you can get it, is they love like maverick playmakers. They love mavericks. And Drogba's got that maverick quality about him. He can win a game on his own. He's, you know, got so much skill. He's capable of, sort of bringing something out that you're just not expecting. But he's he's also got that work ethic and that desire to want to play for the club. And Marseille fans love that. They really take to people who put that badge on their shirt and really, like, you know, that's it. it this means everything to me. And Drogba being a Marseille fan growing up, that was it for him, right? It was, I just wanted to play for that club. He would study Papa and see how his movement was in the box, see where he scored from, can he score from outside, inside, head, left and right. And it was that that really set him up to become a footballer. And yeah, the path was long, but it was ultimately that one year at Marseille was just about as good a striking season as the club has, has ever seen. Um, and certainly in terms of the com being the complete package, which is what what Drogba was, and that that had you know I think he's had some ups and downs with the fans over the years, but I'm pretty sure if you ask any Marseille fan what they think of Didier Drogba, they'll rank him right up there with the very best they've ever seen. Now Dimitri Payet sort of experience and experienced a similar high at Marseille which saw him make the leap and now coming back and sort of experiencing a, another similar high of I think it was Rias Boas who said if we're Paya dependent so be it but he's a whole different kettle of fish compared to Drogba sort of experienced the same ups and downs but a controversial figure in fans' mind and the way he left West Ham obviously disgruntled a few was there a risk that you thought was taken to to not include him because you have to but in the sense of you know it's going to be going out to a predominantly English market did you sort of want to explain how great this club was and why he wanted to return 
Yeah, I think so. I think it's like it's kind of the the Drogba thing as well, in that you you need to understand why Marseille took to a player like that. So, well, why the fans really took to him? He can be infuriating and really difficult, and you may not fancy it from time to time. But he's so brilliant. He's such an outcast. He's such an outlier that I think a lot of people within the city can relate to that, being that they're they're in the south and they sort of look elsewhere and see the dominance of Paris now and. Um, things like that and, and I think that that's what obviously brought him into the hearts of the Marseille fans um, I don't I think that people in England we, we probably I don't know he, he probably splits opinion right I think there's some people that don't like him but I, I don't think there are many that can doubt his quality yeah I, I think we're all just a bit jealous of, of how good he was for West Ham <laughs> right exactly and I think that there's there's pretty much like every football fan in the UK and whether you like the bloke or not and whether you like the way he engineered the move but that's another thing altogether and I, and I don't think that even matters really um, I think even West Ham fans the few that might be still bitter about the way he left I don't think it matters because they got to enjoy 18 months of just sheer brilliance and, and there's just you can look maybe at the time it's something you hate but you can look back over you know what a couple of years later and be like yeah you know what it was actually it was actually just really good that we got to watch him play football and i feel that way i feel that way like watching the premier league every week that we actually just some of the free kicks he scored some of the skills he pulled out were just like out of this world um but nowhere and this is the thing we we are divided in, in, like, as English football fans, we are divided on what he is. But in Marseille, there's no division. They all love him. So you can see why he wanted to go back to that club and experience that sort of uh, emotion and love again. And, and, and you see, as, as people read the magazine, is, as you know, it's that means everything to him. That adoration of the fans, that that is his motivation that's why he played so well i think that's partly why he did well west ham's kind of like that in a sense as well they love their mavericks as well they love the players that got that individual flair and skill but i reckon it's sort of a another level at marseille and definitely we, and we're touching on it there we're speaking of kind of the premier league in the uk and ireland and marseille have kind of had their fair share of brits and irish have kind of gone over there and there's a brilliant piece by james kelly that talks about like these home nation players that make the short trip across to France. So did you want to include something? Firstly, were you tempted to just write a whole piece about Joey Barton's accent? <laughs> uh, we could have put that in the language of football magazine, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> but firstly, like, we include this sort of thing that automatically gets this connection to the reader of, I know that guy, oh, he played for Marseille too. And it, it's it's profound, and Joey Barton's the first that springs to mind, and he actually said something in it that was pretty crucial to why I think this magazine will be a success, and you touched on it before, is he said that Marseille has an English feel to it. It could be an English club. It's not like London or Paris. Football is integral to the city. When the team wins, the whole city is happy. And did you feel this connection when you were editing this, this issue? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. For the 120 years that this club has been in existence, it's been the premier club in the whole city, and now it's the only, you know, it's the only club in the city. And so you, they've always fought against what they perceive to be the establishment in the north, um, and the often perceived favouritism of of northern clubs, certainly in more recent years. And uh, and I think that that's probably that's partly something that that drives it, and probably is what gave Joey Barton that feeling of that it's like it's everything to the people. I've been lucky enough to go out there a few times and you walk around the streets and there's Marseille graffiti everywhere. There's Marseille tracksuits being worn by however many, like sort of particularly like young men and stuff. But also on my last visit, there's so many like young girls wearing it. Like, and I don't even mean, you know, your age, I'm talking kids, like young girls. And that was awesome to see as well. And it's just, it's like this, you go to a game at the velodrome and there's all different ages, but particularly like older men. But you go around the streets and there's like kids who have got it and you, you're just seeing the whole spectrum of society, old and young, all of them wearing Marseille stuff on, all of them like feeling a part of the club. And it's and it's weird because you, you sort of the velodrome with the way it's been redeveloped kind of looks like it, it's like a spaceship that's landed in the city. And it, but it feels like it's like the beating heart of it as well. There's some really cool photos that we that the club shared with us for, of like a, from a drone where the stadium is just sitting in the city you can see the whole city and there's just this big white shining 
like um, I don't even know what you call it, like a monument basically uh, in the city and I, and I think that's what it is it's, it's actually like a really great metaphor to have this massive thing shining above all else um, and that sort of sums up what Marseille is to the people yeah and we, we talked all about um, in the piece you saw we speak about you know Stephen Fletcher Chris Waddle or Magic Chris as he's kind of known over <laughs> there Tyro Mears and could there be another player making the, the trip across the channel to Marseille, do you think, an English player? I hope so. I think that Angel Gomez moved to Lille um, just the other day. So there's there's an, there's an English player going out to, to Liga. I don't see why not. They, they love, they have a very strong relationship with British players. And it's not just sort of the ones in, in recent years, but, you, you know, Chris Waddle's considered one of their finest players. He was obviously a quality player. And he, I think he probably needed to go abroad to get the true adulation. He kind of like kind of like Hoddle. They needed to go abroad to actually be fully appreciated. But they they loved him there. And you know Tony Cascarino done a, done a great job. Trevor Stevens only there for a year, but also was very highly regarded. So uh, I, I shouldn't see why not. I think that the club could could well be looking. There's, there's so much English talent coming through as well, and we're living in a time where English players are willing to go abroad and, and try it out. And I think that they'll. Well, they just have to ask Jerry Barton, right? I'm sort of sure they'll go out there and quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> but the Magwells talks about legends, and we spoke about it at the start of giving the reader context of who Marseille is and who the players are that built it, in a, in a sense. And you speak, you know, about Josip Skoblar, who's a man who's getting boot deals before boot deals were a thing. Um, <laughs> Enzo Francescoli, who's a number 10 who was idolised by Zidane himself. Um, how important was it in the magazine that you covered these people who gave Marseille the sort of identity that they are now? Uh, yeah, I think you, you have to. I mean, with, I mean, with the case of, of Enzo Francescoli, he's like one of the rarest talents to have, to have ever played. I think a lot of Marseille fans who, who watched him play will say he's the greatest they've ever had full stop. And he was only there for a year. Um, I remember Enzo Francesco playing in World Cups and he was just a tremendous footballer, really, really gifted, just so, so silky, so smart. He used to glide around the pitch. Um, but I, and I think it is, and like you say, with Skobla having boot deals before boot deals were a thing and being this like you know huge celebrity around the city, just being loved by everyone and taking Marseille to his heart. Um, I think that to, to understand why perhaps you've got what makes a legend of Marseille? That there will always be like a common thread. There'll always be a theme that runs through them, right? And if you, we've, we've spoken so far about Didier Drogba, we've spoken about Payet, I mentioned Papin, we've spoken about Chris Waddle, we've spoken about Francescoli and Scobla. So what did they all have in common? They were, they were supremely gifted individual footballers. They were so talented with the ball at their feet. They had that maverick quality about them. But in, in, in a lot of cases, particularly with like um, Drogba and Francesco and Waddle, they, their time there was quite fleeting as well. It was almost like they weren't there for long enough to be legends, but they are because they just left such an imprint. And that's the same, you know, we, we can talk about the players of, of our lifetime, the Drogbas, the Papans, the Waddles, but there were way before that, there were people that meant just as much to the fans. And I think it's important to tell this story. And it's important to keep that history alive. Yeah, and, and you guys do a great job of that in the magazine. And, you know, there's, there's the features that we've spoke about there. There's also a brilliant feature on the rivalry and, and what it means for the fans to play against PSG. Um, we we'll also talk about the stadium itself with some cracking pictures, like you say. And you, you do incredible issue after incredible issue over at these football times. But this one does certainly feel different, doesn't it? Yeah, I reckon it's probably certainly from the last few issues where we sort of covered um, a little bit more serious clubs like the real Goliaths of the football world and, you know, Liverpool and Real Madrid and Barcelona and that. Whereas Marseille's got something else. It's like a little bit cooler. It's a bit hipster. It's a bit more fun. There's, they don't take themselves seriously. And, and, I, and I can actually say that about the people at the club. They don't take themselves too seriously. They're actually quite relaxed and they... They just they seem to really enjoy their football and they seem to have a real big connection with the people of the city. So yeah, I, I think it is. It's it's probably got a lighter tone throughout the magazine. It's not as um, it's not as serious as like the Real Madrid issue, which was the the club issue before. Where I don't know, there's not too much. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I personally wouldn't call Real Madrid a cool club. <laughs> I think they're great. They're brilliant, right? But they're not a cool club but Marseille is cool and I think we've I think we've got it with the cover as well with Javier Arez cover which is just like 
like so much fun it's so bright it's colorful and that and that was yeah that's what we were trying to do in this issue and um, we're gonna kind of round it out with a bit of an odd question now paul cites it was mentioned and it was a fact that stuck in my head throughout the magazine is the only player in france to win the competition the french national competition as a <laughs> outfield player and a goalkeeper <laughs> and that's just a crazy start and it, it got me thinking and i had memories of Kyle Walker putting the gloves on for City. I'm pretty sure there's some others that we don't want to mention who've done it in the Prem not so well. But what what player do you think, if any, could do both? And what team would it be for? Oh, man. But yeah, that Paul Sykes thing is insane. Like, he actually won it. He played in the finals as, a, as an outfield player on the keyboard, which is a shit. I don't know. Um, I don't know, probably like someone, it's got to be someone ridiculous, like, so it's got to be, I don't know, like a Sergio, like Sergio Ramos, for example, right? Because he's such a, he's such an animal. He'll slide tackle with his face, but he, he'll happily like run into a post to save a <laughs> shot or something. Because he's just like a ridiculous individual, a great player. But it, I think it has to be someone ridiculous like that, or maybe like a, I don't know, like like Raheem Sterling. He's pretty good, pretty good at diving. So maybe he might be alright in goal as well. Um, yeah, maybe one of them. I don't know, but it's never going to happen again. That's for sure. Definitely not. And and the magazine is brilliant. We've only touched on very kind of briefly on the features within it because the fact is you you kind of need to buy it and get your hands on this to to truly understand what what's gone into it. And where can people buy the magazine? Uh, let's just go to these little times dot shop. Um, you get the magazine there. It is. Yeah, like you say, you you gotta you gotta hold it. You gotta feel it. It's like a unique smell to these sort of times this year as well it's got like a weird smell you gotta yeah you gotta hold it you gotta feel it but yeah you can buy it from us and um we'll have a few few stockists online as well stanchion books who are obviously sponsoring this will they'll have it as well um and they're doing a great job selling lots of different different print print editions um so yeah just go to these sort of times shop <laughs> and thanks for joining us today omar where can people find more about you and the magazine on socials uh well you can't find me I don't really, I don't really you, know, you, can, you can actually find me, but I never post anything. I'm, I'm terrible on social media, but just just have a search for these couple of times and you'll, you'll come across my, uh, my dodgy work. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking us behind the scene of these football times and the Marseille issue. Thanks, Georgia.